The war on drugs is intensifying in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, according to law enforcement officials and prosecutors. They also say the illegal drug trade has ramped up efforts to stop the operations. 2822 Eyewitness News I team reporter Annie Mahalshik is live for us in Wilkes-Barre Police Headquarters with the latest on what some are calling the unseen war in our communities. Andy? Well, good evening, Nick and Candace, and those on the front lines of this unseen so-called drug war admit that they realize many people don't even give it a second thought unless the drug dealing takes place in their neighborhoods or impacts their daily lives. And law enforcement experts, again, contend they can help make gains in the drug war if they can reduce the, the demand for these drugs here on the street. Most of it's coming from Mexico now, uh, coming up through source cities like New York and Philadelphia. Wilkes-Barre City Police Chief Joe Coffey says that virtually every day his investigators receive tips about the flow of illegal drugs into the city. The hot drugs these days, heroin, meth and fentanyl. Yeah, these investigations, they start out um, with information. A lot of times it's information from the public. That's how we partner with the public. They provide information. We take that information, we investigate it and develop a case from there. Uh, unfortunately for us at times it takes Sometimes it takes time. Luzerne County District Attorney Sam Sangladoshi says the drug dealing operations are becoming increasingly violent. We're seeing a little bit of, uh, I guess, the competitive nature of the drug trade has led to violence, you know, among the different groups trying to establish their territory or, or turf, as, as the task force officers call it. So it's often resulted in violence in, in the form of usually gunfire. And treatment does actually work. Jason Harlan is CEO of Wyoming Valley Alcohol and Drug Services. He says treatment and counseling are major factors in the battle against drug dealing operations by reducing demand. Obviously you have to put your mind to it. There's a lot that you have to do, but there's a lot of services out there. You see a lot of people come through these doors every day and they are successful. And Harlan says a big factor in the equation is the person's family. It's extremely frustrating for family members. You know, they're part of the, they're part of the, the issues that the person with the substance use disorder has as well. So this is something that creates a ripple effect. So absolutely, it's a major problem. And Jason Harlan insists that many of those success stories come about when the families and the person involved in substance abuse go through the treatment process and counseling together. But he says there's no such thing as one size fits all. Every case is very, very different. Nick and Candace.